Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. In our top story, last month, Senator Terrence Nelson provided statements to News 2 regarding his disapproval of the syntax bill. The senator exclaimed that his hemp legislations could best assist the Virgin Islands in generating new revenue. The grassroots organization held a forum on St. Croix and invited residents to share their sentiments on pushing further legislation. Here's more from Stephanie Brown. Last evening, a legalization of marijuana forum was held on St. Croix by an organization entitled Grassroots. Desensitizing the stigma was the theme of the evening and invited guest Senator Terrence Nelson spoke about the decriminalization of marijuana in the territory. But when they're done, whether it's chopper, police or whatever, come down the North Yard and they kick down the door and they take our plan, we don't stop them. And we gotta go to, if we're gonna stop them, we need to go to the courts or something to try to stop them. So we're saying, let's prevent all of that and let's advocate to just change the law for everybody. Senator everybody. Terrence Nelson introduced Bill Number 30-0018 in 2013 to reduce the penalties for the possession of small amounts of marijuana to fines rather than imprisonment. However, the bill's jurisdiction does not cover the distribution or the manufacturing of marijuana. Senator Terrence Nelson and former Senator Sean Michael Malone also sponsored an act to conduct a public vote on promoting manufacturing and distribution of hemp in the Virgin Islands to generate revenue. Fifty-seven percent of those voters voted for enacting legislation. Similarly, a medical cannabis referendum was held in 2014 and 56 percent of those voters voted in favor of considering medical cannabis legislation in the territory. Forum attendee Manuel de Mora spoke about the economic potential of legalization of marijuana. We have to admit on this island, cannabis is an active industry. We're selling it, we're buying it, we're making it, we're using it. Let's regulate it and tax it and let's get something out of this as well. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Financial reports have shown that Colorado's cannabis industry brought in $270 million in early 2016. According to votes from referendums, the Virgin Islands has favored legislation on the cannabis industry. March 9th will be the last day for voters to change political party and or cancellation of party enrollment, as well as the last day to investigate all questions relating to Registration of electors. March 9th is also the last day for voters' registration. For more information on the 2017 special election occurring in the St. Thomas, St. John District or St. Croix, you can contact the election systems office on the respective islands. The weather conditions today continue to improve. Although the speed of the winds and the waves are declining, the dangerous sea conditions continue with warnings of strong hangovers, coastal flooding, and the operators of small boats still in effect. In addition, there is still a high risk of underwater currents. Isolated showers, fast moving, shall be observed during the rest of the day going into the evening. The conditions will be uh, gradually improved during the rest of the week. Tune in for the latest in our AccuWeather forecast later in the newscast. Line department crews worked late into the night Tuesday addressing isolated WAPA electric service interruptions in the two island districts. The interruptions, which were affecting small pockets of customers, were directly related to the high winds that have been experienced since Monday evening. The winds have had an impact on the authority's transmission and distribution systems. Well, today crews were dispatched on St. Thomas to the Frenchman's Bay Area and to Santa Maria, where small where service to a small number of customers were affected by either extensive overgrowth on electric lines or irregular voltage. On St. Croix, crews focused on service interruptions in Montbijou, La Grande Princess, Estate St. John, Bethlehem Village, Prophet Hill, and Concordia East. Alfredo Andrews Elementary School, their classes were dismissed due to heavy overnight winds that damaged parts of the school building. School buses were dispatched to the school to begin taking students to their regular drop-off locations. The Sinclair Superintendent's Office regrets the interruption of classes. Um, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, they will have some information regarding the status of classes for tomorrow. A 46-year-old cruise ship passenger 
was at uh, Megan's Bay when he was hit by a wave on Tuesday. The result of the high winds, he was treated by lifeguards and bystanders before emergency services responded to the beach around 10.30 a.m. The man complained about neck and back injuries. VI police also responded to the scene. The man who was a passenger on the Norwegian escape was treated and released from the hospital Tuesday afternoon. St. Croix and St. Thomas St. John Rescue Squads, they held a training event, and the training is described as a confined space rescue at the St. Croix Rescue Academy. Chief Charleswell, Akeem Charleswell, and uh, Public Relations Officer Dallas Walwyn say every rescue um, they, they do are not all the same, but these trainings uh, the Territory's Joint Rescue Squads did on St. Croix brings a new rescue reality. The video shows responders helping those trapped in tiny spaces with little room, damaged walls, slopes, or dead ends. The conditions of confined spaces also helps the responders to prepare for areas that have a hazardous atmosphere related to physical challenges, biological and chemical principles, whereas making the rescue a safe working place when space is limited. Trainees were outfitted with certified protective equipment efficient communication gear, and the guidance of the course instructors. Trainees were all focused on their individual objectives with, a great, with great team spirits. Thanks to uh, Dallas Walwyn and Charleswell for that video. Well, are you in a tsunami inundation zone? If you are, a tsunami walk is a great way to learn your evacuation route from home or work. You can hold a tsunami walk during USVI Tsunami Preparedness Week. That's March 19th to the 25th, and uh, to be counted as a tsunami ready, tsunami ready. Tsunamis remain a serious threat to the territory and the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency. They're encouraging the community to learn more about the deadly force of nature during the Tsunami Preparedness Week, March 19th to the 25th. Vitima is also urging the community to practice walking the evacuation route if they reside, work, or often play in the tsunami inundation zone, Vitima will mark the Tsunami Preparedness Week by participating in the annual Carib Wave 17 Caribbean Region Tsunami Response Exercise, which is scheduled for March 21st. The exercise is designed to help communities identify operational strength and weaknesses. And that's at 10.15 a.m. on Tuesday, March 21st. Vitima will activate the territory's 24 sirens to broadcast the system's test message and its all-clear message. Register your participation at www.tsunamizone.org. View the USVI tsunami evacuation maps as well and learn more about tsunamis on the website. Meanwhile, the Department of Education, they're holding tsunami walks. More than 2,000 students, faculty, and staff across the territory will be practicing the evacuation and the evacuating of the school campuses to their designated safe areas. Adelita Cancrine Junior High School, they completed their tsunami evacuation drill on Monday. As part of the drill, an emergency alarm system was activated and emergency vehicles were present to assist students and staff. Copper Community and Police Association, they say after a meeting on February 23rd, the community wants to uh, get involved in making crime prevention everyone's responsibility. So they are hosting a fundraiser for security street cameras to assist the VIPD. The event will be held on March 25th at Tutu Park Mall in the courtyard from 12 p.m. to 3. Music is by DJ Shambundi and there will be raffles with prizes including hotel stays and dinner for two presented by Kappa, Smith Bay Action Foundation, Virgin Islands Peace Clergy, East End Red Hook, Tutu and Bavoni residents, Senator Brian Smith as well, and Senator Marvin Blyden. WikiLeaks has released a massive trove of information purporting to show the breadth of a CIA spying technique. The anti-secrecy group also claims that the majority of the CIA's cyber weapons have been stolen by criminals or foreign spies. Scott McLean is in Washington with details. WikiLeaks is calling these documents Vault 7. They purport to show that the CIA's hacking abilities are expansive. According to WikiLeaks, even after a hack is detected, the CIA uses techniques to make itself appear as foreign hackers to cover its tracks. 
The CIA can use phones and even smart TVs to eavesdrop, WikiLeaks says, adding that in 2014, the CIA was exploring how to hack into vehicles with Internet-connected computer systems on board. Now, WikiLeaks also claims that encrypted messaging apps like Signal, Telegram and WhatsApp may also not be safe from surveillance. The CIA is prohibited from spying on Americans by their own charter, but the FBI is not. They get a warrant when they use these kind of tools. But yes, in, a, in essence, what, you're, what we're saying is that the government has the ability, if they want to use it, to get into basically any device in your life. One of the major concerns being raised here is that if the CIA is exploiting weak spots in the security of technology we use like smartphones, then sooner or later America's enemies could find those same vulnerabilities. Hey, keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers, we'll see that the Dow, Nasdaq, and S&P all down. The Dow down 29, Nasdaq down 15, S&P 500 also down at 6. Coming up on News 2, you probably saw a lot of ladies wearing the red today in support of a day without women. It's also International Women's Day, how some of the territory celebrated and recognized the day. We'll be right back. Welcome back. International Women's Day is recognized March 8th. Women acted together for equity, justice, and the human rights of women and all gender oppressed people through a one day demonstration of economic solidarity. It came about after the Women's March in Washington, March 8th, a day without a woman, recognizing the enormous value that women of all backgrounds add to our socioeconomic system while receiving lower wages and experiencing greater inequities, vulnerability, vulnerability to discrimination, sexual harassment, and job insecurity. Women recognized the day mostly by wearing red, but in some cases they took the day off from paid and unpaid labor, avoid shopping for one day, with exceptions for small women and minority-owned businesses. Here in the VI, groups such as Sisterhood Agenda and VI Sisters they encourage people to show support. We saw some women wearing their red in solidarity. Carol Hurst Law Office closed in support. And we will have a number of uh, women and men that uh, came into, there was a number of women and men that went into Scoops and Brew right there in Subbase wearing red in support. And they were offered free coffee. Governor Mapp said, today we celebrate the economic, political, social, and artistic achievements of women here in the Virgin Islands and around the world. The Map Potter administration remains committed, he said, to overcoming gender discrimination, protecting women from abuse and harassment, and taking steps to ensure equal pay and opportunity. The governor said women were all an essential and vital part of his upbringing. He said, from my maternal grandmother, my mom, my more than one dozen aunts and my school teachers, women nurtured me, my siblings and cousins, and raised us with high standards and moral character. Today, the Matt Potter administration cabinet, he says, is comprised of many high-achieving, successful, and competent women who are working to uh, shape a brighter future for our territory and our private sector, has many more accomplished and successful women who manage, own, or operate businesses employing thousands of Virgin Islanders. The governor also noted. Here's a message from someone who were, uh, was out in support of uh, women, a day without women. Today is International Women's Day, and we're so pleased that Virgin Islands women are participating. As our sign says, we the people protect each other. And that was a message from Carol Hurst, Attorney Carol Hurst. Now across the country and the globe, women were standing up, shouting out, shattering symbolic glass ceilings and marching for women, celebrating International Women's Day. Still, this International Women's Day comes during a contentious political time. The organizers of January's massive Women's March on Washington have encouraged people to take part in a strike call the day without a woman, asking women to wear red and stay home from work. A handful of school districts in several states even closed for the day, citing the number of employees who called out. President Trump sent a couple of supportive Women's Day tweets 
and First Lady Melania Trump appeared at a female-focused luncheon. Democratic Congresswoman showed solidarity walking down the House steps together, all dressed in red. Well, in other news, for the last six months, AP English language and composition students at CHS have been hard at work on a collaborative research project with high school students in Denmark that shed light on an aspect of VI history. Last Wednesday, CAHS students welcomed 24 Danish students from Hattesle Cathedral High School in Denmark to embark on three days of research sharing, and they presented their findings at CAHS. Here's more. This project has been an experience of a lifetime, and we hope that this energy between us will cultivate lasting friendships and meaningful work between us. CAHS students saw their hard work come full circle. On Wednesday, March 1st, they welcomed 24 Danish students from Hattesloe High School in Denmark and embarked on three days of research sharing, historical field trips, and a roundtable discussion. We are traveling in the footsteps of the Moravians, and they led us here from whom the United States purchased the island in 1970. Open drains lead water from torrential rain. For the last six months, AP English language and composition students, they have been hard at work on this collaborative research project. The role that the Moravians played in the education of the slaves in the then Danish West Indies had a great impact on education as we see it today. So it's imperative that they know this. Once they gather this information, it'll last them a lifetime. Their research was titled The Centennial Collaboration Project. What's really interesting to me is that uh, you have taken a particular interest in the history of the Danish involvement in the Danish West Indies. Uh, just last night I was reading a piece on this issue and I found out that uh, many scholars in, De in, in Denmark didn't begin to do serious research in the Danish West Indies until very late. Let me say this though, 50 years ago, a group from Charlotte Amara High School visited Denmark for the semi-centennial, which was the 50th anniversary of the transfer. And that was the first time that I went to Denmark because I was principal of that school, of this school at that time. It's a great honor to be here and we are so happy that we finally <laughs> came and that we succeeded in coming over. It's been a long um, process. We've been working on this for the last year. And um, yeah, it's just great to be here. And following the presentations, the students toured the historic Moravian churches on St. Thomas and immersed themselves in Virgin Islands culture. The Danish students also visited St. Croix. Students in Mrs. Elaine Jacobs and Wendy Andrews' classes, a total of 36, began the Centennial Collaboration Project at the start of the 2016-2017 school year. It was inspired by Mrs. Jacobs' visit to Denmark in April 2016 with UNESCO's Transatlantic Slave Trade Program. The students are housed with local families and teachers. Each Danish student was paired with a CAHS student and attended classes as well. Well, speaking of Danish ties in celebration of the Virgin Islands Transfer Centennial, the Denmark Virgin Islands Transfer Marathon, Half Marathon, 10K, that's being held on St. Thomas, St. John and St. Croix. Uh, it opens at 5 a.m. Thursday morning. That's the next one coming up. The Coral Bay races start and finish at the Fortsburg bus stop area, the half marathon at 6 a.m. The first was held on March 5th on St. Thomas, next March 9th on St. John, and then March 12th on St. Croix. They invited runners from Denmark. All ages are, and abilities are welcome to participate. It's presented by the Virgin Islands Pace Runners. And thanks to Enzo Cologne and Monique Simon for those picks, and congrats also for participating. In recognition of VI History Month, the Virgin Islands Department of Education, in partnership with the United Jazz Foundation and the Jazz at Lincoln Center, is expanding its Jazz for Young People program in the territory's elementary schools during the month of March. The collaboration involves musicians from uh, local uh, and, and international playing alongside Grammy Award-winning drummer Dion Parson, 
founder of United Jazz Foundation. Instructors include renowned musicians Timothy Sullivan, vocals, saxophone and flute, Dion Parson on drums, Clifton Finch, Cliff Finch on bass and Gilchrist Sproul on piano. Schools in the St. Thomas St. John District enjoyed instruction on March 2nd to the 3rd. Today it was held on uh, St. Croix at Claudio Marco Elementary School. Thursday, it's March 9th at the Juanita Gardena Elementary School and then Friday, March 10th, Ulili Rivera Elementary School. Cyber Patriot, you've heard of, the National Youth Cyber Education Program it will be launched at the Lou Muckle Elementary School on Monday, March 13th, beginning at 1215. Student recruits will use an animated software program to become familiar with cybersecurity. Students participating are all sixth graders and will participate in the short Cyber Patriot course through June. Now, high school students from St. Croix Central High, the St. Croix Career and Technical Education Center, and St. Joseph's High School, they began competing in the Cyber Patriot program in November 2016. The first Cyber Patriot Middle School induction ceremony was held at, at the Arthur Richards Junior High School on Wednesday, February 15th. Cyber Patriot was established by the Air Force Association. The Elmo Plaskett Little League, they celebrated its opening on Saturday, March 4th at the D.C. Canagata Ballpark on St. Croix. The St. Croix Educational Complex marching band, coaches, players, parents, they all participated in the parade that began at the entrance of the park and ended on the lower baseball field. Elected officials and members of the governor's cabinet, they came out to provide some words of encouragement as well as support to the young players and the league's officials and administrators. Congratulations to all the young athletes. Stick around, your news to Accu Weather Forecast is coming up next. Well, taking a look at our current satellite and radar as far as the Caribbean goes and for the U.S. Virgin Islands, we're looking at that standard trade wind flow pattern here. So we did see a frontal system stalled out over the islands earlier this week. That has since dropped off towards our, our south and our east here. That's more so located over the Leeward Islands heading de back into the southern Caribbean. But as we head throughout the rest of our time, really our weather pattern going to be run by those trade winds at the mercy of these uh, uh, cloud clusters that you're seeing across the board here. So depending on what clouds we get overhead over the next five days or so, that's really going to be dependent on what we're looking at as far as our shower activity. Regardless, however, uh, these cloud clusters, not very strong. They should be brief and very passing as well. So as we head into tonight, we're going to remain mainly clear, 71 degrees for your low. So good night, evening to get out there. And then as we head into our Thursday, here really across the island. We're looking at a high 83 degrees and a couple of showers as well. Once again, should be brief and passing maybe 30 minutes or so. You just head indoors and grab your bite to eat during that time. 83 for St. Thomas as well as out towards St. Croix. Now as far as our marine forecast go, we continue to see a small craft advisory for tomorrow and really over uh, the next couple of days as our winds aren't looking to decrease too much. They're still out of the east. Moderate trade winds 15 to 20 20 knots. Waves still a little bit high as well, 8 to 10 feet on the Atlantic side. So the high rip current risk going to last into tonight as well as a, a coastal flood advisory in places. Now, as we head on the Caribbean side of things, pretty much the same story here. Winds on the east, 8 or 15 to 20 with your waves 8 to 10 feet there. Look at your extended forecast. Well, shower or two in places really through the weekend as well as into early next week. Not going to see uh, too much changing over the next five days. Back to you. Thanks for that. Time for our news to weather picture there by Leland Cotto of Ricardo Richards Elementary School giving us some typical VI weather with some blue skies and sunshine. And uh, the showers are disappearing a little bit. Leland, nice and chilly at night. Thank you for that. Send us your news to weather picture to the address on the screen. And that is all for now. Nia Hazel, Sarah Haynes, and Dara Cooper, thank you for the information on uh, International Women's Day, a day without women. That's all for this edition of News 2. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sandra Romancing. Have a wonderful evening.